The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today is our epistle reading, especially the beginning of our epistle reading for this past Sunday, which was Transfiguration Sunday. Transfiguration Sunday, when Jesus took upon himself some of the glory that was his as the true Son of God. We're looking at our epistle reading for Transfiguration Sunday from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 16 to 21, especially thinking of that first verse where Peter writes, We did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. We ourselves, we ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. And we have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by a prophet's own interpretation, for prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. My dear friends in Christ, the Apostle Peter in this letter was dealing with Christians who were struggling because they were dealing with false prophets and evildoers who had actually come into the church. And it's never easy to deal with those who are especially within the church who are trying to lead people astray because oftentimes those who would try to lead us astray don't realize that they're trying to lead us astray. They don't know what they are doing and they may even believe that they're faithfully proclaiming God's word. But Peter's advice to those fellow Christians here and to us is, to keep our lives focused toward eternity. That will help us to watch out for those myths and false teachings that would try to lead us astray. To put our efforts into getting ready for heaven? Well, Jesus, during his ministry, he told the parable of the weeds. And in that parable, there was a man who planted wheat. And after he had planted the wheat, there was an enemy who came and planted weeds among the wheat also. When the man's servants then realized that the weeds and the wheat were growing together, that it wasn't just wheat out in the fields, they asked their master if they should pull all the weeds out of the field. And to that he said, no. He said, no, that if they would try to pull the weeds out, what would happen is that they'd also be pulling weed out together with it. Rather, the master said that both should be allowed to grow, that the weeds and the wheat, they'd end up being separated at harvest time. Let's realize that since by God's grace he's called us to faith in Jesus, we're the wheat in the parable. But tragically, what we also have to recognize is that there are plenty of weeds all around us, that there are unbelievers and that there are false prophets around us who would like to choke out our faith. And so we don't get choked out so that the unbelievers don't get the best of us. What we need to do is we need to keep looking faithfully to the word of God to keep on growing in our faith so that we would keep moving forward and upward in our faith, keeping focused in on, on eternity. 
But now one thing that unbelievers or false prophets will use against us to try to choke out our faith, according to the Apostle Peter, is myths or legends regarding salvation and eternity. Well, the Apostle Peter said, We did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The human race has always been concerned about what happens after this life, and that's an understandable concern. Man has always, for that matter, been trying to figure God out. And the fact is, is that God isn't a simple being who can be figured out. Apart from God, man can't even figure out how the world we live in works. You know, ancient Hindus, they had this weird theory that they came up with. They said that the world was a flat area, a flat world that rested on the back of a huge elephant. And that huge elephant was standing on the back of an enormous turtle. And that enormous turtle happened to be standing on an immense coiled snake. Now, if you think about it, that sounds just absolutely foolish. But if you really think about it, is that any more foolish than believing that this world is millions and billions of years old and it came into existence without God being involved? That doesn't make sense at all. That is a a terrible myth that so many people seem to believe. It's a myth just like what the ancient Hindus believed. But now that's a terrible belief, but what really is a shame is that when people believe in myths regarding their salvation, many people, when they think about it, they believe that what God will do is he'll let anybody into heaven if they're pretty decent people in the eyes of the world or if they just aren't as bad as the other guy, guy, then God will let them into heaven. Or or there's always that myth that believes that God is a loving God who surely is going to allow everyone into heaven, that he won't let anyone suffer eternally in hell. Some people believe in, oh, the myth of reincarnation. The years ago, especially the New Age movement, was something that was so big. And and there are other myths regarding salvation that instead of believing in Christ, think of other ways to get to heaven. Well, how blessed we are that the Holy Spirit has worked on our hearts and hasn't revealed to us myths or untruths He has shown us Jesus the Savior, the only way, the true way to eternal salvation. So what's Peter saying to us? Don't trust in myths. Trust in Jesus and his word. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for calling us to faith in Jesus, our Savior. Keep us always focused on the truths of your word, which show us our sins and show us our Savior and will never lead us astray. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus, we pray in your name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.